Hey y'all. So, um, I'm going to talk about a subject that's a little sensitive. And I'm on my period, so I'm a little like on the emotional side of my hormones and stuff. <laughs> but, um, wanted to talk about wanting to be loved. And this is a it's a touchy subject for me because I'm still going through that healing process. Um, some areas, there's some areas um, it, that are just hard for me still. But, you know, I'm reminded of a relationship that I was in for six years, uh, over six years. And um, just the things that I was willing to do just to keep that relationship going and um you know just I was you know I think about my where I am now and I'm not saying that I'm like just so much better but I have grown but it's a gradual process. It really is. It, you know, a lot of times we'll tell the stories from defeat to completely victorious and completely like healed, but we don't never tell like the in between while we're going through it or whatever. And I'm 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 still on that journey to being like completely healed or delivered from this, but um I think about this relationship and um just just what I allow myself to go through and um and just looking back at my life, you know, even like So basically, I always felt like I had to perform or I had to do in order to qualify myself as someone worthy to be loved. And that's how I um, defined my worthiness of having certain relationships and friendships or whatever. And as y'all saw in my story, I was, I had a lot, I said, I had, um, I showed you guys, you know, my hair journey and, um, you know, how I used to look and how hair was my idol and stuff like that. And, you know, that's a whole story within itself too. But, you know, um, you know, when you, when you deal with rejection or whatever like that, there's different levels and layers and stuff like that. And, you know, one of the things that I guess I tried to do is, um, you know, because I was I was a geek back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I'm still geek life, you kid, <laughs> gang gang. But um, <laughs> but um, you know, I felt like you know back in the day in high school, you had the pretty girls, and you know they looked a certain way. So then, when as you got older and you got a little bit more money, and you know you could you know look a little better or whatever, you know I started to you know grow and and look cute or whatever like that. And you know I got a little cuter. And so I I used my looks as a way to uh, bring worth to myself, uh, you know, as a as a as a as a way to say, well, because I look like this, I'm worthy of love. You know what I'm saying? And or like for instance, you know, back when I was dating my ex of six plus years. You know, I felt like, well, shoot, I look good. You know, I keep myself looking nice and, you know, I got stuff going on for myself. You know, I'm trying to, I'm in college and, you know, almost done with my, with my degree and stuff like that. And, you know, I, you know, I, I handled my business and uh, among other things that I was doing for him in that relationship, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and I felt like, well, shoot, you know, you don't have a car. You got two kids by two different women and you have a woman that has a lot going on for herself looks amazing if I have to say so myself you know 
drives to see you, brings you food, you know, is still loyal to you even though you are cheating on her, you know, um, holding you down while you're in a financially rough patch right now and, you know, looks good and you still, you still don't want to act right. You still don't want to commit to her. And um, it's funny because even to this day, I can still, I was just talking to my homegirl, and to this day, I can still gauge my worthiness of love by what I can bring to the table. And so, you know, God has really been dealing with me about what it means to be worthy to love. And so, you know, just just for me and, and just defining what love is, you know, and so if a dude rejects me now it's I'm not gonna lie you know the you know Nina creeps up and it's like well how could you like reject me do you see me (laughs) you know especially and especially now you know like I've I've I have reached a, a, a destination in my life where you know people would say oh she's a catch you know I have my own everything you know what I'm saying and so and I feel like I'm a good woman you know what I'm saying so it's like if I get rejected now by a dude or whatever the pride in me starts to fester up and it's like how in the world can you like reject me you're crazy you know what I'm saying like don't you see who hello (laughs) you know don't you see who you're dealing with so you know and um Once again, I'm gauging my worth to what I do. And so that's so burdensome because when I compare it to why God loves me, it's like floating on air. Like even before I had all that I have now, God still was like, I choose Nina. You know, I want Nina. Um, I love Nina. And I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to earn it. He just wanted to freely give it to me. And um, it's something special about me and God's relationship because, like, legit, his, his love has saved me, you know, and is still cleaning me up every day. And so now when I think about dating somebody now, and I, you know, even even trying to impress, you know, you know, trying to impress somebody to see me, you know, um, it just brings me back to where I came from. Like, I don't care how good I was to my ex, you know, it was never enough. It was never enough. Like. I was always striving and I always felt like I was always starting at square one, always starting at square one, trying to impress somebody that just refused to treat me what treat me like I was worth, you know, and give me what I was worth, you know, give me the treatment that I was worth um, and do, you know, and the thing about it is, is, um, You can't expect something from someone, I guess, that, um, I don't think he even, he definitely didn't know what love meant, but I don't, I think he had issues with, 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 with loving himself or whatever, you know, um, and receiving love, you know, because he had issues with his dad or whatever, but, um, but either way, um, that's that's a whole other story. But I think this lesson that I'm still learning when it comes to um, being with somebody or whatever, I don't want to feel like I have to prove my worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't want that, like, where I'm constantly feeling like 
hey, I'm telling you I'm worth I'm worth it. I'm worth being loved. Because it's like you're constantly always trying to be seen. You know, constantly trying to live up to this standard. And this is the question that you have to ask yourself. Like, what happens when your beauty fades? You know, what happens when, you know, you gain a little weight? Or, or what happens when you're not funny when you're when you're in those moments where you're not funny where you're annoying you know where where you're hard to deal with what happens when you're not the things that you strive to be or the or the or you're, what happens when the great qualities about yourself is not present you know in in certain moments or 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 if you completely just go through a rough patch in your life and the great qualities about yourself is just not there you know, is that person committed to you and everything that comes with you? Or are they only intrigued and are they only, you know, um, drawn by the good that you can exude, you know, outwardly? Do they only want you for what you can do well? You know, what if you're not? doing your best what if you're really doing the worst what if they see the worst you know are they still going to hold you down and are they still going to love you because they made a decision that I want all of you and I think that's why I love God so much because literally God has seen all of me you know all of me you know and he's still committed and dedicated to Nina and I think that's the most beautiful thing and I think it's easier said than done for me because once again I'm still in this healing process so I'm not saying this as a way like don't do that no I'm, I'm just telling you that this is something that I know an area that I'm still working on and, and but but I'm I'm I'm, I'm recognizing that you know, you know, you're not too far from what kept you bound. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I tell people that I, I literally, I rely on the goodness and mercy of God. And, 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 and I rely on him heavily to help me. Because, um, yeah, man, I just, I, I need him. I need him in my life. But, um. I don't want to be, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be with somebody that makes me feel like I'm constantly having to prove to you that I'm worth your love. I don't want that. It's not worth it. And I, I've, I've been in so many situations my whole life in situations like that. And it's funny, my ex he hit me up or whatever and he'll it just doesn't surprise me sometimes you know even he's still going through his healing process and his growing process and he's grown you know but I feel like his growth is based in performance I think me and him both had the same issues because I think he didn't feel good enough to be loved by his dad you know, because his dad kind of rejected him heavily. And I think that my ex has acquired some things. He finally has a car. He finally has a better, um, he has a, he has a better um, career, you know, and he's, he's doing better for himself. But it's funny because it's like he hit me up and he still kind of has those same tendencies. And it's just like, I'm like, if, first of all, don't call me thinking that you have a chance. And you know good darn well you have no you have no um, intentions of loving me like I should be loved at all. You know what you're trying to do, and I can sense it. And I don't want you like that. I don't. That that ship has sailed. You know. And I think for me. I'm not the type of person that likes to hold grudges. I just don't I, don't. I don't like it. And I'm not the type of person that will see someone that I used to date and like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you or, 
you know, like, oh, I'm a block you. Like, no, like, you know, I knew you. I loved you. I still love you. You know, like, I still got love. You know, I still got love for you. I'll help you if, if you need help. You know, I'm just the type of person. You know, if you hit me up, what's up? How you doing? How you been? That's just me. You know, so when people see that you're just friendly and you're just being nice sometimes they think that they can take advantage of that again and like oh okay i can get in again it's like no that that's not what this is player (laughs) you know don't get it twisted you know and so the fact that i sensed that he was doing that i had to tell him about him so i was just like you've grown and, and i'm so proud of you but you you really need to work on the fact that stop using people you know stop thinking that you can like use people for your own gain you know and I had to tell him about himself because it's, it's not okay there's so many women that he went through so many women that he promised love promised rings promised marriage and promised he was gonna do better and all this stuff and it's just like you're ruining so many people's hearts you know because of your own brokenness and it's not okay and don't come back to here to me and think that just because I've opened my opened myself to you as a friend, that you can take advantage of that. I said, don't do that. It's not okay. It's not okay to do that. But um, but anyways, um, I'm on this journey with you guys. Um, this journey of healing. Um, I will not. I won't promise you that I will be a, a, some type of standard for you to look at and, and but but what I can do is I can let you guys see my scars I can let you guys see what I what I'm still going through my process and I can tell you hey I'm leaning on my source which is Jesus and um I'm not the epitome of perfection and I'm not something I don't have life all figured out I just don't I don't have life all figured out you know Um, but I can tell you that God is faithful that's one thing that I can promise you Um, I can't promise you that I will always be what I should be but I can promise you that God is faithful he's faithful because he's faithful to me and how I'm dealing with life is with him helping me through it and so that's pretty much it um you know if you know that you have certain areas in your heart or in your life that you know need working on and 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 still you know you're you're going through that process don't beat yourself up about it you know and don't let other people uh put you down because of it you know people one thing I've learned is that there are a lot of people in this world that are afraid to go through the healing process and they'd rather they'd rather scoot a lot of dust underneath the rug they like to do surface cleaning they don't like doing deep cleaning that deep cleaning I don't know about y'all but when I was when I was younger my mom used to make us deep clean and it was gruesome I hated it like I didn't like it and it's just and it's the same process when you're deep cleaning your heart it's a gruesome process it's not it ain't something that's like oh my god this is so wonderful no uh the process of uh deep cleaning and that's what god does it takes time it takes a process it's painful it's it, it's 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 not comfortable you know and so some folks like to just take the skeletons and just throw it in the closet but God's like no let's bring these things out one by one and let's deal with them you know and so don't let nobody um try to make you feel bad or inadequate or less than because you're you're brave enough strong enough mature enough to say I need to go through this and I need to uh uh work on myself you know I need to do this you may be afraid and you may want to put on this facade and you may want to, you know, uh, jokey jokey and hee hee ha ha and, 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 and smile and put on your pageant face for people. That may be what you want to do, but you know you're still hurting on the inside and you don't want to deal with you. That's your life. And if you want to live your life um, broken, 
uh, and, and also affecting others and you don't want to work on yourself, that's you. But for me, I, I don't want to keep living my life like that. I want to live life abundantly. And living life abundantly is, is, is dealing with me and, and allowing God to, 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 to um, help the areas in my heart, you know. So that's the process, y'all. But anyways, I love you guys, and um, I'm about to clock in. I gotta go. All right.